thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, this uh, is a great conference. Uh, so when I was sending over the slides, uh, my office administrator asked me, why are you sending 30 minute talk slides to a 10 minute uh, talk? And I told her, hey, this is IIT conference, I can speak at my normal speed. Um, so, um, and honestly, honestly, I thought, 9.30 ka class A, koi nahi aega. But now, uh, now I'm in trouble. Um, so I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence, um, how to build AI. And to understand that, we have to answer this question, what is intelligence? And I have a very simple definition for that. It's the ability to model this world and to act on it. What's important to remember is that it's actually possible to act on the world without modeling it. Uh, a lot of people do that. Uh, in fact, if you, if you look at the history of uh, evolution, ev history of intelligence, uh, all the animals that came uh, before mammals, they all acted on the world without modeling it. This is called old brain. All these animals that came before birds or hu you know, humans, mammals, they all have this old brain and they can act without modeling the world. So here is an example of that. Here's a frog um, hunting for bugs. Um, and um, so it, it, would, it would keep going at this. Uh, it is not getting any feedback from the world and it's not using any feedback. Even though it's not getting any nutrition out of that activity, it would uh, keep going at it. This is model-free uh, behavior and uh, always lands uh, things into uh, trouble. Um, uh, and, uh, so uh, here is, here is a modern day version of it. Uh, so, so this is, um, you know, this is the recent achievement of deep reinforcement learning uh, playing Atari games. Uh, so on the left hand side is um, the training game. This is the game on which the system is trained and it is playing it really well. Uh, but on the right hand side is the same system playing the game when you move the paddle by three pixels up. So you can see that it's not, it's not able to play, play the game, it is missing the ball uh, most of the time. Uh, you can't, oh, probably can't see the ball on it, but just trust me, it is missing it. Um, so, th so that's another a modern day version of it. Um, and here uh, is a picture from a recent paper on deep neural networks. Uh, what is, it is showing is that these neural networks, uh, which are trained on enormous amount of data, can actually be fooled by making small perturbations. Uh, so here it is, you know, you can see pictures of n really noise getting recognized as robins or some wavy patterns getting recognized as starfish. These are all recognized with almost 99% certainty that these are really starfish or freight car or jackfruit, et cetera. So a lot of people in this world are worried about robots taking over, machines taking over. Uh, and I tell them, uh, given the current state of affairs, you don't have to worry about robot uprising. Here is my solution to that. You know, what you have to do is, instead of wearing this white t-shirt, you wear this t-shirt with this, this pattern on it, and the robot will think that you, know, you are a starfish and you can, you can escape. Um, so um, how do you go from, so the, the reason for this is easy to understand. Uh, if you think about how AI works today, you, know, you have a box, uh, you have, it's, a, it's a black box, you, have, you can put any neural network uh, in it, and in, in comes training data, and uh, also you provide supervision using labels, and you can, you can train it using any algorithm. You can train it using gradient descent or evolutionary algorithms or reinforcement learning, but finally what you get is a, is a you know, so stimulus to response box, and that box is one inscrutable, and it also doesn't have much ability for thinking, imagination, et cetera. All, that, all those characteristics that we associate with intelligence. So how do you go from today's AI, which is old brain, to the new brain? So all this stuff is old brain. How do we go from there to new brain? Uh, so there are uh, two things that you need to do. Uh, one is take neuroscience and cognitive science seriously. Uh, that's what tells us what intelligence is and how to build it. Uh, and focus on data efficiency and task generality. So let me explain these two things. Uh, so this new brain, all the things that we call intelligence is, is the result of neocortex that came later in evolution. It's a new structure that came up in evolution and it was a pretty sudden event in the evolutionary history. So this is this sheet-like structure that is put into your brain, uh, you know, and it's a, it's a crumpled sheet that's sitting inside your skull. That's where almost all what we call intelligence resides. So to understand what makes the us unique, what makes mammals unique, you have to understand 
how this neocortex works. So what is surprising about the neocortex, so you know, your brain has the old brain in it, uh, your limbic system, uh, and the neocortex is a sheet put on top of that. And what makes this work uh, is some unique structures within the neocortex. So you have to understand what that unique structure is. It's much more structured than a typical neural network. So if you, if you take a typical neural network, deep learning is all the uh, craze these days. If you take a typical neural network, it has very little structure in it. It's a set of neurons stacked one over top of the other. Um, but if you look into the neocortex, you actually see a lot more structured uh, circuits. So you have to understand what these structured circuits mean. What, what is the computational underpinning of these circuits? You have to understand it from a computer science aspect. And then you would start understanding what intelligence is. And in fact, one of the pioneers of um, deep learning, who is uh, Jeff Hinton, uh, made the statement uh, that despite the success of deep learning, um, the way we currently use unstructured layer of artificial neurons uh, to model a cortical circuit is utterly crazy. And he's right. Um, so the second aspect is focus on data efficiency and task generality. So currently, with AI systems, which are narrow AI systems, are trained using virtually unlimited training data. You, you give it, you shove a lot of data into the system, and you, you test it on a very little training data. You, the, you, the, sorry, the test data is almost held constant while you increase the uh, training data. This is how currently the systems are tested on. Um, to go to general AI, uh, this slide is messed up, uh, you have to start with a small training set and uh, test on unlimited test set. That is how we humans work. We, you know, we, don't, we don't get unlimited training data, but always new things are thrown at us. Um, and uh, so those are the two things that we are focusing on at Vicarious. And uh, to showcase some of our work, um, so a few years back, uh, you, must have, you might have seen some news about uh, CAPTCHAs getting cracked. Uh, that was us. Um, so, uh, and so you know, one thing to realize about CAPTCHAs is that um, you are not trained on CAPTCHAs. You, you can, I can show you a new CAPTCHA. You don't need any training uh, examples from that. You can still crack it. Um, so very different from the way uh, deep learning systems work. And the way we crack CAPTCHAs was like that. You don't actually train on the CAPTCHA that you're trying to crack. You train on, uh, like, you know, you train a child, you train on uh, simple fonts, and you show uh, CAPTCHAs and our system could break it. I'm going to skip the next two slides. It's just comparing uh, deep neural networks to um, our system showing that ours is you know, almost uh, five or, or orders of magnitude more efficient. Um, the second one is uh, more recent. Uh, this is a paper that we uh, published in ICML uh, this year. Um, this is uh, the Atari playing comparison, where you, you compare our system with um, the deep learning system. So this is the uh, deep learning system on the left-hand side, uh, which is playing um, the Atari game with uh, the offset paddle, uh, the, the paddle is shifted uh, three pixels up and it is getting confused. And our system, although it is not shown that uh, ever during training, it is able to play that really well. Uh, and uh, similarly, if you in introduce a wall in the middle, uh, just like that frog which keeps going on the, on the bugs, uh, the deep RL system would keep bouncing on that wall, whereas our system would plan to uh, play it around the wall. Um, these are characteristics of uh, human intelligence. And so what are we, where are we going uh, with this? We are focused on um, building AI for robotics. Uh, there are so many applications in robotics where adding intelligence to robots can help with manufacturing. Um, so here is a picture of uh, an assembly line from um, 1900s. And uh, here's a picture actually from 2000s. Things haven't changed too much because when you want to manipulate uh, small uh, pieces and assemble them, uh, you still need uh, human labor. And our goal is to automate a lot of those uh, processes and replace uh, a lot of the assembly line uh, manufacturing with robots. Um, so that's, the, uh, that's our goal, that's where we're going. Um, and uh, I have a, a new Twitter handle uh, if you, you, can, <laughs> you can follow me, it's called uh, the Leap Learning. Uh, it's, a, it's a play on uh, deep learning. Uh, I haven't tweeted yet. Uh, this is, I just uh, created it two days back. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you. <laughs>